Okay, so the topic today is uh, it's quite a mouthful, leading a high performance agile team. Uh, but what I'm actually talking about here is two topics. One of is one is leadership, you know, and the second one is about uh, high performance agile teams. Uh, what they are, I will explain in time. Uh, a little more, more clear, uh, just to get much clearer. So this is what I'll be talking about today. Uh, we'll start with talking about Agile and the Agile team, uh, what they are. Uh, and I will briefly talk about uh, leadership roles in Agile teams and how to transform uh, your team into a high performance team. So this is just three topics. Hopefully it's be a quick one. So we have a lot of room for question and answers later on. Oops. Okay. So a little about me. Uh, a reintroduction or uh, introduction for uh, you guys who haven't known yet. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm Bima. Uh, I'm a lead senior entrepreneur uh, in ISOS. Uh, I have several, I was, I have been blessed with several experiences in other companies uh, in leadership position as well, mostly team leads. Uh, and I have ventured uh, a number of opportunities, you know, working in different types of teams. But mostly, uh, I have been tasked to work with a team under a lot of stress, uh, a lot of demands, and under the uh, requirement to do it in the agile way. So those are a couple of experience that I have to experience. Uh, which built uh, the way I am right now and how I uh, communicate with my teams uh, so far. I also had experience of being a Scrum Master for quite a number of months, uh, just so I know what it is and uh, uh, I can share with my team. I don't claim to be uh, an expert on Agile or anything. It's just that I have some experiences that I think I can share with you guys. So moving on. Yeah, so let's talk about Agile software development, right? So this is the things that we've been throwing around a lot uh, between uh, between us developers, engineers, and all software practitioners. Uh, let's talk addressing the fact that in the beginning, uh, things are much, much more simple uh, for us in the software development uh, management, uh, especially addressing all your project managers. Uh, you probably agree with me this one uh, so if you look into the old ways when we do things waterfall right it's actually pretty simple just look at the diagram on the right so if you see the the, uh, the simple waterfall on the left and the agile way it's pretty much straightforward what the linear is right it's simple it's just a linear thing going down while the one is going you know curvy here and there so why is that? Why do we even think about using Agile and stuff like that? Why not just do things the old way? So what actually changes around these few years, right? These few decades, right? So what changes is that software product has become much and much more complex, right? So you're talking about back then, uh, just a simple a couple of desktop application or simple web applications, right? You know, back in the, 90s or early 2000s, right? But then things got a lot more complicated. Uh, we have new advancement. We now have smartphones. We have uh, Internet of Things. We have smart everything. We have smart TV. We have, I don't know, smart freezer or anything, uh, which, uh, which, make the, uh, which make it a lot more uh, than just a simple uh, single app to be done, right? So it has become a lot more complex. And with the way things right now, uh, the time to market has become much more, much and more, uh, become more and more critical, right? Everybody's doing uh, apps right now. Everybody's doing uh, digital advancement, right? So there are more and more competitions in the market, right? And aside from that, if you look into the, the user perspective, the customer perspective, you know, people change, right? People back in the 90s and 
all the way to the uh, 2020 right now have different preferences right and they're adapting things much much uh, much much quicker so if you say this thing is relevant in the today it might not be relevant in say a month from now or even weeks from now so that's the level of uh, competitiveness and uh, uh, how dynamic the thing, things are right now and also we are now start talking about uh, continuous product delivery, right? So, do we just do one app, but maintain it, maintain the lifetime? You know, uh, keep updating it, adding no new features, just to keep it stay, uh, keep it alive in the market, right? Or we do, do we create multiple apps uh, in short bursts and just keep creating uh, another one in uh, in successions? Uh, any any other way? Uh, any any other choices do you do uh, you uh, any other option you choose from these two it will still think uh, we still talk about uh, how to maintain those app life cycles and everything uh, uh, yeah and so forth so uh, in response to those changes right now uh, we start to think about how do we gradually deliver uh, value to the customer user, right? Uh, in a way that we can adapt to changes much, much more quicker, right? Instead of doing something in, in a very long time, a long period, right? Doing something in, in large bulk, uh, we start to think of doing things in steps, right? We start to break down all the features. We start to think about, okay, let's do it in cycles and stuff like that right and this is where people start to talk to talk about uh, agile development right uh, uh, if you look into the only two documents in agile uh, development which is the agile manifesto uh, agile manifesto only talks about four things right so it's individual interactions of our processes and tools Working software of a corporation, corporate documentation, customer collaboration of contact negotiation, responding to change uh, offer, uh, following plan, you, you know, all these four things, right? But in short, it's trying to uh, gradually deliver failures to customer, right? While remaining adaptable to any changes. Hence, now Agile has become the, the norm of any software development. And if you ever talk to anybody who's working on software business, they probably talk about Agile and how they do the product. Now that we are acquainted with uh, Agile uh, software development, now we, we can dig a little bit deeper into the term Agile team. So what do we mean with Agile team? Uh, there is no single, uh, single uh, specific definition, right? Uh, but what most people agree is that Agile team refers to a small group of people working closely together, trying to deliver the value to the user and the customer of the product or the service. Notice that I'm uh, highlighting a couple of uh, terms here, like the fact that when we're talking about Agile team, they need to be small, you know, small, uh, big, uh, 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 big enough to get the job done, but not too big. So it's a blocking the uh, a blocking, uh, uh, it's a blocking the work, right? It's making it slower. So there's no set number. Some people say six people, some people ideally seven people, but it has to be small enough, right? Uh, and if you're looking on a uh, small, uh, larger project, you're probably gonna have smaller teams uh, working together instead of one big team trying to do the, everything at once and also i like that this is our group of, of people right and they are trying to deliver value to the user so they have the common goal which is to deliver value to the users and customers and all customers Now, one other keyword that I want to talk about when we talk about Agile team is the, word, is the keyword agency. So, uh, if you're looking at the picture, you're probably wondering what this picture is. So, 
have anybody ever turned by show fans has have anybody ever heard the term free range farms no one okay so uh what free range farm actually means that so uh in the business of agriculture right now you know they also uh <clears throat> there's some belief that if you raise uh raise your you know cattle uh, chicken or pigs uh 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 properly you can actually have better results than the normal way you do it so normally when you raise like let's say you're raising a cow right and you're going to milk that cow usually you put them in you know a uh, small area small spaces right you put them in a cage in small spaces like that and just keep continuing feeding them feeding them you know grooming them all the time and then when it comes time to milk them and you start to milk them right but there is another way to do it right so free range farm actually means that instead of doing that they're letting the cows roam free in a certain area so there's no cage except a very large uh, a very long fence so they put the boundaries and i don't know how many square miles but uh, they put just those uh, boundaries into the area and just let the cow be you know eat any grass you want just do it do it, do, it, uh, do things normally instead of having to feed them all the time and what happens is that when you when when they do it like that uh, the produce of the cow is actually uh, of higher quality than the one that you raise you know in small farms uh, there are many theories to this. Some say that you know they feel less stressed. They feel they feel uh, they feel uh, uh, they eat more balancedly when you do that. But the thing that I'm trying to bring to the table, uh, trying to discuss, it, trying to say is that when you're working on an agile team, uh, you should give them enough agency to do things the way they want it and the way they see uh, fit. Because by doing that, you're actually making them more agile. You know, it's, it's uh, you give them enough uh, confidence, uh, sort enough responsibility on what they need to do. You give them the boundaries. Okay, these are the things that you, uh, these are the things that you should not do or should do, and then you just let them do, uh, let them about on how to solve the problem. So let's jump ahead a, a little bit more and let's talk about how leadership works in agile team right so I, I think you probably already know most of this right so what how does agile teams differ between traditional teams traditional teams usually have like a project manager or team lead or anything or somebody else on the higher level of the team uh, being on top of the team and instructing all the other team members below him well, agile team doesn't work that way. So if you see it on the right, there's a circle there. So where are, who's the leader? Uh, where's the leader on this team? The answer is that this team is self-organizing. So they con uh, so they uh, they uh, set their own rules and how they do things their way, uh, by their own. When you talk about it, that's just uh, uh, the leader stays within the same level with this a circle and rather than being a lead it's actually served as three things as a servant as a leader and as a facilitator uh, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, further on now let me ask the question real quick uh, uh, you can chat or you can uh, you can say uh, you can use your voice if you can if you want to my answer my question is simple if you're talking about an agile team, specifically Scrum team, uh, since we are using Scrum, what is the one true leadership role that you think exists in a Scrum team? You know, is it a product owner? Uh, 
Is it the team lead? Is it, you know, we don't use product, we use business analyst. Is it the business analyst? Is it the QA? So what's the one true leadership role in Scrum team? Can anybody guess? Everyone, PM and Scrum Master. Okay, definitely not God. Okay. Mas Bima, please guess. Yes. It's God. Yeah, God, no, definitely not God. <laughs> not on this case. Um, yourself, you yourself. Yourself, that's actually a good answer as well. But if you look into the Scrum uh, guidelines, so there's also a documentation for Scrum. It's, it's a few pages long. You can look at the scrumguides.org. They actually mentioned one true leadership role in Scrum, which is the Scrum Master. That's the only true leader uh, leadership role in Scrum. So according to the Scrum Guide, uh, Scrum Master are true leaders who serve the Scrum team and the larger organization. Uh, what's What's funny about the Scrum Master is that uh, it is both a leader and servant, right? So if you think lead, leader, you usually, usually just think that somebody's leading in the front or, you know, who tells people what to do, right? Give, uh, give advice and stuff. But actually, Scrum Masters is not just a leader, right? He also, he's also a servant uh, to, to the team, to the product owner. So it's actually stated on the documentation as well that he serves the Scrum team, the product owner, and the organization. Now, when we're talking about leading the leading, uh, uh, Scrum as a leader, he leads the initiative. Uh, but he serves the others. So how does a Scrum Master lead? So let's see how, uh, how Scrum Master, uh, what's the leadership style of a Scrum Master? Let's try to learn from it a little bit. So, several things that the Scrum Master do, right? So, how does a Scrum Master serve others? Several things that you, that's stated is that one, he coaches the team member in self management and cross functionality. Uh, he also causing the removal of impediments. Uh, he also help the Scrum team focus on creating high value improvements, uh, help find techniques for effective product cost definition, helping establish a break of products, facilitating stakeholder cooperation as the cost of the So this is just a bunch of things that a Scrum Master do in order to serve others. Does anybody see any pattern in here? Do you see anything that, uh, uh, do you see an emerging pattern in this, uh, in this uh, list? I'll help you see. So if I highlight a bunch of uh, initiative that they, uh, the Scrum Master do, the Scrum Master mainly coach or, you know, influence, help, facilitate. So that's actually how Scrum Master uh, try to help his team. Uh, so instead of, uh, instead of uh, removing the impediment, he actually, cost the removal of impediments. So he tries to initiate, but he, he lets the team finish it rather than trying to do it himself. So why, why does he do that? Why does he, uh, he, he, why don't a Scrum Master just, you know, tell people what to do? Why don't the Scrum Master just uh, 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 control everything? I mean, he, uh, uh, tell people, oh, you should do this, you should do that. Because one of his responsibility is actually to make the team self-organized. And when you tell people to do certain things, you know, you start to tell them what to do, then you start to take the agency out of the team. And you're starting to make them dependent. That's why a Scrum Master should never directly involve uh, or tell people to do. Rather, he try to encourage people to think what's the best way to do it. 
He also helps. He also provides uh, techniques, uh, anything. He facilitates, but he does. He also coach, but he doesn't directly uh, uh, tell people what to do. So a scrum master basically try to inspire others. Uh, he works from the inside out. I don't know if it's inside out or outside in, but the best. But I'm trying to say that a scrum master try to drive, uh, give people motivations or goal, and just let people uh, work from that one, to, uh, work out from that. He encourages problem solving uh, rather than solving the issue themselves, right? And facilitates discussion and communication instead of giving instructions. He provides necessary tools and techniques, and he provides visibility. You know, charts, burn down charts, everything, metrics, KPI. He gives those uh, visibility to the team. Okay, so before I go any further, does anybody want to ask anything, or should we leave it to the QA session? Yeah, probably we leave it to the Q&A session later, all the questions, yeah. Okay, so let's jump to the next topic then. Um, so now let's start to see uh, uh, the high-performance Agile teams. So when we talk about high-performance Agile teams, what do we actually mean? Uh, what's the characteristic of a high-performance Agile team? Um, there is no set documentation saying well, this is the 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 definitive uh, characteristics of an agile team. Uh, there are a couple of uh, definitions uh, out there, uh, but from my experiences and from what I gather, uh, these are a couple of things that I think defines uh, an, a high performance agile team. Number one is that they have open and honest communication uh, between themselves. So they're very open with, with one another. Right? They respect each other. And that makes them highly collaborative, right? So they, uh, they take responsibility of one shoulder. They do stuff for the team, right? They collaborate on their own. Yeah, they sell responsibilities for the team. Uh, they mostly, they try to support them rather than just trying to achieve their own individual goals, right? And that because, that's because uh, they take ownership on what they do. They actually take ownership, right? So, uh, and they are the owners of why, not yourself. So what I mean by this, that they actually try to see things a lot more deeper and just the, rather than just how to do stuff, what's the process of doing stuff, they try to see the reasoning between, between uh, those decisions so they can improve the decisions better. And by doing this, they are mostly self-organized and self-sufficient. So they can set their own rules, they can set their own pace. Uh, they're good at keeping up uh, with the, 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 the product pace. And self-sufficient means actually they gather what they need by their own. Like if they need information, they'll just ask somebody else who they think knew, and so forth. And finally, they do continuous improvement. They try to figure out uh, ways to improve themselves, make them faster, make them better, make them uh, do higher quality work, if, 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 uh, uh, give better value to the user and the customer. And they do it. Uh, continuously on each plane. Okay. So how do we uh, how do we attain this kind of team? How do we create or transform our team into a high performance team? I, I don't really know the answer. I'll be frank with you that because there is no one specific answer as well. So that's the thing about Asia, there's no one specific answer. But again, there are some tips out there that I found, including from my own experience. And what most people agree as well, is that the number one of, of all is never ever, ever try to micromanage your team, ever. 
right? Like because like I said before, when you start to do that, you're starting to take away their agency, and then you're starting to uh, make them more dependent to you rather than to themselves, which is the opposite of what you're trying to do. So don't micromanage, as if possible, never at all. Instead of micromanaging, try to do try to do a couple ways uh, to uh, a couple other ways, like for setting a much clearer goal and boundaries to the team. Let's say if you have a sprint, you try uh, you tell them that, hey guys, uh, we need to deliver uh, this ABC task. We need to get it done, and we need them to be done by this week. So you tell them the goals, which is you know these are the tasks that we need to do. Uh, and you give them the boundaries, which is it has to be done by this week. And you try to give them as clear as you can. So if people say, "Why do we need them?" Oh, because why? because if we don't do this, uh, we'll uh, we'll have this impact and that impact, right? And that will be bad for the user because of this, because of that. Try to be as clear as you can uh, of the goals and the boundaries. And hence, that leads me to this. The other, uh, the next uh, tip is to show impact and consequences of those actions, uh, you know, of those uh, decisions to the team. Right? So, if we don't do this by this week, then we'll have this problem or that problem. If you don't do that task, uh, you'll block the others and any any other topics might arise from there. But try to give them the the sense that. This will impact not just you, but the whole team. And get them to think as a team rather than as an individual. Right. The next thing you can try to improve on that is try to present them with re relatable metrics. Right. Like for instance, we do have those uh, brain burner charts that we, use, that we see every day, right? We know how many stories we're doing. We know, uh, is that going down? Are they going up? You know. Additionally, you may add some metrics like you say, okay, so this only, so we need to know, uh, like by this week, how many is already on testing, how many is already is uh, is in progress, how many is in ID, who's doing that? You can try to go deeper if you want to, just as long as something that's relatable to the team and can give them better visibility on what they need to do. No need to say that the next thing that's very important is communication. You know, communication is key when trying to build an, uh, a high performance team. If you look into the previous uh, comments, you know, sorry. Uh, hold on a sec. So all of these things on the grass mostly requires them to communicate better within one another, right? Hence, that's why communication is one of the key in having a high-performance team, right? Foster good communication with them. Uh, be, uh, teach them to be respectful of each other. Uh, promote psychological safety, which means that everybody should have the ability to say what they want to say and what they think is right at any given time without any consequences. So try to give them a space, a safe space to speak. When you already get them to speak, now start to do, to challenge them, you know, start the thing with questions. You know, when you get things, challenge them with questions rather than answers, right? So if somebody came to you and say, but we need to do this, 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 and that, don't go with, don't start with an answer. Oh, you should do this, that, no. Start with question. Okay, so what do you think the best way to do it? And why is that? So teach them to, to analyze by themselves. You, you can do, you can help them, but try to put that as your last resort rather than your first attempt. Now, another tip is that we can actually use most of the, uh, most of the tools and ceremonies which are already on Scrum, your daily stand-up. Uh, your spring grooming, your everything, right? You can try to do them effectively. Now, by effectively, I'm I don't mean I'm not talking about you know limited time. Everything, no, 
is that make sure that you get the most out of them, out of, at a, out of that time, right? Make, make sure that you have uh, enough insights from all the sessions because, you know, being in a high performance team is about being analytical, right? You need to learn about uh, reading, uh, uh, looking into data and discerning the data and, you know, figure out what's the best action after you, you see those data. Now, one of the things that I think we use a lot, but I don't think we have used enough was actually the perspective, you know. So if you talk about retrospective, the perspective is actually a way for us to get an insight of what has happened during our sprints, you know, and see if there are areas of improvement, you know, if there are problems and how can we improve them. And it's also a place where people can start uh, working together as a team uh, and try to figure out those stuff. So try to get as many people, uh, uh, if not every member of the team to uh, be involved in this perspective and speak, you know, because one voice doesn't matter, right? You need more than just one voice to, to, to understand what happens to the team. Okay, so I've been rambling a lot. So what are the key takeaways? So what are I'm trying to say uh, with, this, uh, with this topic? So first thing that a leader in the agile team is the one who stands amongst the team, not above it. So remember the picture I've given you before about a uh, traditional uh, team with a, with a leader or project manager on top and then everybody below. It doesn't happen that way on the agile team. We stand aside. So energy stands along with their team, other than being the one who tells people to do. And agile team leaders, uh, agile leaders plays a unique role of both a servant and a leader. Uh, another thing that we uh, that I want to point out as well is that agile team should be given agency, right? That's one thing, one uh, one of the most important traits for them. Uh, one thing that you need. Uh, and then another important aspect for higher performance team is also communication. Uh, and lastly, uh, try to promote critical thinking to the team. Uh, try to get them to ask questions and observe data rather than telling them what to do. <clears throat> because remember, an agile team is, is a team that's self-organized. So if you still have people coming to you and asking, how to do things, then probably you should reconsider your team and try to see, okay, how can I make them more agile? How can I make them uh, more self-organized, self-dependent? Okay, so I think that's all. Thank you, folks. Uh